So we look back, we look back, and again this morning we go all the way back to Genesis itself. But here in Genesis, we see the story of creation. We see the Godhead who had decided upon this from the very before time began, bringing into existence the plan that he had created. And knowing, even before he did it, that something terrible was going to happen. So he creates the world and he creates man and puts him in the garden. And everything is good because that is the way God had created it. But he knows. Because he has given man free will, he knows that man will use that free will and will sin. Oh yes, he'll be tempted by the enemy to do so, but he will do it of his own free will. He will decide to sin. And as he does so, so he separates himself from God. But in the plan that God foreknew, he also knew that there would be a solution to this. And the solution, which not even the enemy knew about, the solution was that he himself would enter his own creation. He himself would take upon himself the penalty for sin. He himself would die on the cross, sucking the sin out of the world into himself. He himself would do all of this in order that the plan in the end could be fulfilled and that man could come to the maturity that God had always intended him to experience. As we look into this book of Genesis, we see God prophesying, prophesying over the woman, not the man and the woman. This is a strange one. He prophesies over the woman and he deals with Satan who has caused this particular problem. And he says quite simply, the seed of the woman, not the man and the woman, the seed of the woman will crush Satan's head, the child of, of Satan. And Satan himself will strike at the woman's heel. See, this great battle has not yet taken place. It will be taking place at the end of time. This is when Jesus will return and crush the Satan's head and set us free. But in the, before that can happen, he has to be born and he's born in Bethlehem. He's born there. But this was foretold right from the very beginning of time. This was God's plan. You know, we heard about uh, Isaiah prophesying that his name would be Emmanuel. But before that, he says quite simply, the virgin will conceive and bear a son and will call his name Emmanuel. This was going to be a child born not from human father and human mother, but just from a human mother. We honour Mary because of this. She was the person that God chose from the whole of time the woman he chose who would bear this particular child. We don't really know what it is about her character that set her aside in this way. We don't really know what it was truly about her that God saw, but he saw it. He saw it even before he created the world. He saw this woman and he knew that this was the one he would choose in order to be born, in order to enter into his own creation. But here in Genesis, he's also looking forward and he says, the seed of the woman, who would be Jesus? The seed of the woman. When we look forward towards Christmas and we see that child lying in the crib, there's almost shadows behind him. Those things that he would have to do, those things he would have to go through, the suffering he would have to experience. You may not realize this, but when Luke wrote the story of the birth and said about Jesus being born in the stable, he says quite simply that the child was wrapped in swaddling clothes and lay, laying in a manger. What we don't see because we don't understand the language properly is this, that the clothes 
with which Jesus was swaddled. In other words, the wrappings that were put round a newborn baby. These materials were the clothes that the innkeeper had left in the stable. See, the innkeeper was always aware that while staying with him, somebody might die. And if somebody died, he had to work quickly. He had to get the body shrouded up and buried. And these were the clothes kept there in the stable for that purpose. Jesus was, in fact, swaddled with burial clothes right from the very beginning. And as I say, right from the beginning, these shadows were behind him. The shepherds were coming. They were kneeling at his feet. They were honoring him. Later on, the magi, the wise men, would come and they would honor him. Throughout his life, he would go through all of these experiences, but behind all of them, there was a shadow of the price which would one day have to be paid that you and I might have eternal life. Amen.